<laughs> Jimmy O from Joe Blow. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it seems like. I, did you did you have any idea? I mean, were you thinking this far ahead into season two when you started off? We were. I mean, when we before we got into season one, you know, we knew uh, where we were going, not just for the first two years, but a loose sense of where we were going further into the future. Uh, now, I think certain things uh, it surprised us how quickly they came up uh, in the second season, and then there are other ideas that we still just push down the road, and, and we're going to explore later. Um, but uh, yeah, it. Um, it makes it easier when, uh, at the very beginning, you know, we had a very long gestation process for this show early on, so we were able to really build it in a complete fashion, and now it's just about which doors are we going to open. Um, that's a lot easier than having to, like, build a house with your bare hands from scratch and then keep building another house in season two. For sure, and I also like how it's expanded, because obviously you have this great actor with JK, oh my God, yeah. but you've <laughs> built so many characters. This is truly an ensemble piece. Yes. How did you know which characters you would really want to push forward in season two? What was the appeal for that? Well, we love all our characters on the <laughs> show, and that's a big part of it. But I think a lot of it is, you know, we had ten scripts written before we even cast uh, the first season. We knew we had JK, wow. right? But we didn't know who was going to play any of these other characters. Um, and then we got these actors, and they're wonderful actors, and they started to inhabit their parts. And when that started to happen, normally in television, right, like you're writing, like you're laying tracks like one episode ahead of the train, and the train's coming up behind you. Well, in this case, we had laid all the tracks, and then we just say, that train go. Now, season two, we know the strengths of our actors. And while we are watching these actors work in season one, we're like, oh, I really want to see him do that. Or I really want to see her in that situation. And that's what we began to do. So season two, now we're writing to who these people are in, in a really great way. And we got very lucky in season one that we just had a great cast across the board. Now we can expand even further on their talents and what they do. And we get to see two sides of certain characters and introduce the counterparts of certain characters. And that's such a fun thing when it really gets down to it. Because you know that's where TV lives. In a feature, you kind of it's like a snapshot and you take a picture and you hope it comes out really well as it develops. In TV, you're growing it and evolving it as it goes. And so, uh, yeah, it was it was really fun to be able to kind of let that street go two ways now between actor and writers when, when it comes to developing the trajectory of our story. Well, I really like the fact, obviously, the two worlds. I, I like the fact that you guys kind of don't play for the obvious villain. Yeah. There's I don't a, think there is one. I don't think there is one. Because I, I, at, at times I feel like I'm rooting for <laughs> different Everyone. people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so are we. Uh, no, and I think that's especially the case this season. Mm. You know, we met our, our villain last year, uh, uh, Mira, who Christiane Paul plays. Uh, and we introduce her in episode seven, which is the sort of Claire episode uh, of the show. Uh, this year, Mira continues, and we get to learn a lot more about who she is and what drives her. And I cannot tell you how many times I feel so much more sympathetic to who she is and what she's doing than anyone else. Um, there are certain things where I might draw the line, mm -hmm. uh, I would hope. But um, but the same could be said, not just for like the big villains, but you know, Peter Quayle is a great example. Harry Lloyd's character who, you know, it is amazing. We, we were just talking about this. A couple of the writers and I were together in Austin and we were joking about it. Like it's amazing how when I see f feedback from fans online or anything and they're talking about Peter Quayle, I realize like, we like him so much more than so many people do when they see him on the surface because he just seems like such kind of like a sniveling little villain who just like always gets around on the cracks and never makes the right decision. But like my heart goes out to him because he's really like in this impossible situation and he's got to protect his family and what does he do? And he also thinks he still loves this woman who he's married to but she's a spy and he knows she's a spy and he's lying on her behalf and what do you do in that situation? I don't know, there are, nobody's perfect, right? And you know, I always feel like we look at those scenes from the point of view of characters who maybe as an audience we might ordinarily understand to be villains um, but we feel badly for them as writers and we want to see them escape and we want to see them get out of it uh, and, and that's what makes it satisfying is when they do and then sometimes when they get what they deserve. Yeah, I, th I just think it also makes for a more interesting story. It makes it more complex. You're not dealing with the black and white. Yeah, and those kind of stock uh, stock characters, you know, I think that uh, it, once you start to present those shades, you know where those stories are going. And that's not satisfying at all. So where are we now? What, how far are you thinking next? I mean, yeah, we <laughs> well, we know what the third season is. I can tell you that. You know, wow. so we uh, if we're if we're lucky enough to get one, we know where that story's going to go. And uh, I'm very excited about where that story's going to go because I don't think 
anyone uh, is going to see coming where we're going at the end of this season. Um, it's the second half of this season, you know, is just a sort of like tightly, f we just have been spending, you know, the whole first season and a lot of the second season lighting so many fuses and they all go off uh, all at the same time in a pretty surprising fashion. And, uh, and you know, where it goes from there is, uh, is, is pretty cool and going to be pretty different uh, from what we've seen so far. Howard, are uh, you a spy? No. Your other is a spy? I'm not him. What do you think it was that made the two of you so different? A choice to turn left instead of right. Your other is out there right now, living in your life. Erasing you from your own existence. After what happened, everything is different now. Your home has been compromised, and there are people hiding among us. She looks like me, but I don't recognize her. Anyone from their world is an enemy. Take control of the situation. It's not that simple. Things at home are extremely complicated. These people have sleeper agents on the inside. And there are things I saw that I shouldn't have seen. Let me worry about that. Is it hard all these years not knowing who she was? I don't just quit on people I love. You have learned how to deny almost any truth. You are a gentleman. And this is war.